Well, good morning, children, and welcome to Tabernacle Cardiff Sunday School. Uh, let's begin our time together uh, with a word of prayer. Uh, so let's make sure that we're sat nice and still. Let's have our hands together and our eyes closed. Our gracious God and our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that it is your day. And we thank you that we can be found here in Sunday School, Lord, to learn about you. Lord, we pray that you would help us to understand what we learn. And Lord, we pray that you would bless this time together. Draw near to us wherever we are. For we ask all these things in our Saviour's name, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, let's uh, start Sunday School as we usually do. Um, by singing our Sunday School prayer, which is Father in this place of worship. Let's uh, remind ourselves now, shall we, um, about what we looked at in Sunday School last week. Um, for those of you that were with us, uh, you'll remember that we started a brand new series. Uh, it was a continuation, wasn't it, um, from our series on Moses uh, that we finished um, a couple of months ago. Uh, and we learnt, didn't we, about one particular uh, thing. Can anybody remember what that was? That's right, we learnt about the golden calf and we learnt about how the children of Israel, um, they grew impatient, didn't they, whilst Moses was communing and talking with God uh, in the mountain. Uh, and they spoke to Aaron, uh, his brother, and they asked him to make them um, an idol, really. So they gave them uh, all, so they gave Aaron, rather, all of uh, their gold jewellery. Uh, so that uh, Aaron then uh, made a golden calf for them to worship. And God was very displeased with this, wasn't he? Um, so much so that he spoke uh, to Moses and he told him to go back down from the mountain. Um, and there were a few lessons, weren't there, um, that we could learn from this. Um, there was uh, impatience, wasn't there? And I'm sure we all are impatient at times. Uh, and uh, we spoke about that uh, in our in-person Sunday school uh, last week. Uh, we were looking at uh, how we were, um, how we all knew that we were impatient and that we need to be more patient and that we need to listen and obey uh, to God's word. And it was particularly listen and obey uh, to the Ten Commandments uh, that God has given us uh, in his word. And that reminds me, actually, um, about our memory verse that we looked at uh, last week, where we reminded ourselves about uh, one of the Ten Commandments. Uh, so we'll bring that uh, up onto the uh, screen now. So let's have a look at that. Uh, and it was uh, this one. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. And that was Exodus chapter 20 verses 4 to 5. And this is what the children of Israel had done. Uh, they had made themselves a graven image uh, in the golden calf and then they bowed down to it and worshipped it and they served it. So all of these things in this verse from the Ten Commandments the children of Israel broke in that uh, one moment that we learnt about last week. So we'll say that uh, once more uh, together. So say it with me and I'll say it slowly. Thou shalt not make unto thee 
any graven image. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, <clears throat> nor serve them. And that's Exodus chapter 20 and verse 4 to 5. Okay, we'll say it once more together because um, it's a bit of a longer verse uh, and there's some um, uh, keywords in there. So we'll say it uh, together uh, once more. So say it with me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. And that's Exodus chapter 20 and verse 4 to 5. Okay, so we'll uh, take that uh, off the screen now and we'll see if we can uh, say that together. Uh, so say it with me, um, I'll say it slowly. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. And that's Exodus chapter 20 and verse 4 to 5. Well, let's uh, bring that back up onto the screen now and we'll see uh, if we said that right. Uh, yes, I think uh, we did. Um, and there you can see uh, our Instagram um, picture from last week uh, with our memory verse from Exodus 20 verses 4 to 5. And there we can see a lovely image of a very, very nice garden uh, from Thailand, uh, I am told. Um, and there you can see uh, our verse from Exodus uh, chapter 20, verse 4 to 5, um, regarding uh, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Uh, thou shalt not bow down thyself uh, to them, nor serve them. Um, and that's a really important uh, lesson to understand. And we learned last time that uh, in uh, our in-person Sunday school that uh, idols are not just physical things. Um, idols are anything uh, that can replace God. So we need to be careful uh, what uh, we worship in our lives and we must only worship uh, the Lord God. Well, let's now uh, sing our first uh, hymn together. Uh, and it's uh, this one. Uh, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Well, it's now time to turn to the Word of God. Uh, so if you have your Bibles with you, um, could you turn with me, please, to the um, Old Testament? Um, we're going to go to the uh, third book 
um, of uh, the Old Testament. That's the book of Leviticus, so it goes Genesis, Exodus, uh, Leviticus. It's just uh, come up onto the screen now. Now, And we're going to turn to uh, chapter 16. And we're going to read um, from verses 29 uh, to 34. So towards uh, the end uh, of the chapter. So we're going to read Leviticus uh, chapter 16, verses 29 uh, to 34. Uh, So let us hear the word of God. And this shall be a statute for ever unto you, that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, ye shall afflict your souls, and do no work at all, whether it be one of your own country, or a stranger that sojourneth among you. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you, to cleanse you, that ye may be clean, from all your sins before the Lord. It shall be a Sabbath of rest unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls by a statute forever. And the priest whom he shall anoint, and whom he shall consecrate to minister in the priest's office, in his father's stead, shall make the atonement and shall put on the linen clothes, even the holy garments. And he shall make an atonement for the holy sanctuary, and he shall make an atonement for the tabernacle of the congregation, and for the altar, and he shall make an atonement for the priests, and for all the people of the congregation. And this shall be an everlasting statue unto you, to make an atonement for the children of Israel for all their sins once a year. And he did as the Lord commanded Moses. And may God uh, bless to us that portion of his word. Well, let's now come to our Heavenly Father once again in prayer. Uh, So let's make sure that we're sat nice and still. Let's have our hands together and our eyes closed. Our gracious God and our loving Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for today. Uh, We thank Thee, Lord, that it is Your day, and that, Lord, once again we can be found here in Sunday School, uh, worshipping Thee. Lord, we thank Thee for Your Word that we have just read. Lord, we pray that You might grant us um, understanding of it, Lord. And, Lord, we pray that uh, as we now come to today's lesson, Lord, we pray that You might give us listening ears, Lord, Lord, take away any distractions, give us concentrating minds, uh, we pray, and give us understanding hearts, Lord, to uh, know what your word teaches us, Lord, and the truths that are contained within it. Lord, draw near to us wherever we are, uh, and uh, we pray uh, that you would indeed bless us all. For we ask all these things in our Saviour's name, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, before we come to today's lesson, we're going to sing again. Uh, and we're going to sing um, uh, one of the new ones we learnt uh, last year. Um, and uh, it's this one. It's a lovely uh, hymn. Uh, we love this house of prayer in which thy children meet. And thou, O Lord, art here, thy chosen friends to greet. everyone it's good to be here with you for today's lesson I hope that you're all keeping well 
We learnt last week that God spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai and gave Moses the Ten Commandments. The Lord God also gave Moses instructions for the tabernacle they were to make. This special tent would teach the Israelites how sinful people can come to God who is holy. Last week we learnt about how sinful people can be at the foot of the golden calf. We too must think about the sinful state of our own hearts. Something very great must happen if we are to be reconciled to God. We can still learn from the tabernacle because it was made to be a picture or an example of what the Lord Jesus would do for everyone who believes in him. Today's lesson is about the Day of Atonement. Do you know what the word atonement means? To atone is to reconcile or reunite. God is holy and pure and man is sinful. A big change is needed for sinful man to be able to approach holy God. The first thing that we are going to look at is a meeting place. The tabernacle was a special tent designed by God so that he could be among his people. It wasn't like a tent you may have been camping in. It was the tabernacle, God's special tent. We can read more about it in the Bible. The tabernacle stood in the centre of the camp. It was designed so that the children of Israel could pick it up and move it during their journey to the promised land. It was a meeting place that taught them that God was willing to meet with them and hear their prayers. Today, we must realise that God isn't far away and he longs for us to be reunited with him through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus. God wants people to know and to love him. The holy place, also called the holy of holies. Although God wanted to meet with the people, he needed to teach them that that it wasn't possible to enter into his presence unforgiven. Inside the tabernacle or tent was a second tent hiding from view God's dwelling place. The Ark of the Covenant was inside the Holy of Holies. The Ark of the Covenant was like a big chest made out of gold. A covenant is an agreement. God promised to, to speak to his people from above the mercy seat. God's people were to remember to obey his commandments. The golden ark with God's law hidden inside it is like a picture of the perfect life of the Lord Jesus. He lived in complete obedience to God's law. He never sinned in thought, word, or action. No ordinary person could enter the Holy of Holies. The high priest was only allowed to enter this most holy place once a year on the Day of Atonement. He had to follow God's instructions very carefully or he would die. This taught the people that God is holy and no sin or unforgiven sinner can live in his presence. The veil. God used this as a constant reminder of the barrier that sin had put between God and man. Here is an example to help you understand. Look at the picture of these two rock faces. You cannot get from one side to the other. There is a big gap or valley in the way. We may try to be good and to please God, 
But the Bible tells us that all our works are as filthy rags. It is only the Lord Jesus who can make a way for us or a bridge in this example to know God. When Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, we read that the veil in the temple was torn right from the top to the bottom. This showed us that Jesus' death had broken the barrier between us and God. The High Priest The Day of Atonement, or at one month, was a special day of the year. The people were told to keep it as a day of rest and to be truly sorry for their sins. The High Priest was to enter the Holy of Holies and to make an offering for his sins and for the sins of the people. To enter the Holy of Holies, the High Priest would not dress in his usual beautiful robes, but was to put on plain linen while he made offerings for the sin of, his pe of the people and his own sin. He would also have to wash in the laven as an example of being holy. This taught the people that one day God would send a mediator or a go-between. Though God, Jesus was born as a man and lived in our world, being tempted as we are, yet he never sinned. He alone was able to take the punishment for us so that God the Father could forgive our sins. Sacrifices before the high priest entered the holy place, he was instructed to offer sacrifices of certain animals. The people of Israel would watch the animal being killed and the blood taken as an offering. This impressed on them the seriousness of sin. Even the children were made to realise that their sin could not be forgiven without the shedding of blood the sacrifice of a life. This too shows us that only by dying could the Lord Jesus pay the price of our sin. It's important to remember when we read about these Old Testament sacrifices that we remember what they taught. A scapegoat. A scapegoat is when someone is blamed for the wrongdoings, mistakes or faults of others. Imagine all the people gathered around the tabernacle, waiting for the high priest to come out from the Holy of Holies. In Leviticus 16, we read that two goats were chosen for the day. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one for the Lord and the other other lot for a scapegoat. The one for the Lord was killed as a sacrifice, but the other was left alive as a scapegoat. Aaron the high priest would lay his hands on the head of the scapegoat and confess all the sins of the nation. This was a picture. This scapegoat now seemed to be, although not really, to be carrying all their sins and was led out to the wilderness, never to be seen again. This was a picture of God's wonderful forgiveness. When we truly repent, that is to turn from our sin, our sins are laid on the Lord Jesus. Christ has taken the punishment for our sin on the cross of Calvary. God removes our sin as far from the east is from the west. How often friends or family may say they have forgiven each other for hurt or upset, yet still bear grudges, remember hurts and offences. But when the Lord forgives, he does so utterly and completely. Finally, a place of burning. The final part of the Day of Atonement, as we read in Leviticus 16 verse 27, 
and the bullock for the sin offering and the goat for the sin offering, whose blood was bought, brought to make an atonement in the holy place, shall one carry forth without the camp, and they shall burn in the fire their skins and their flesh and their dung. About four miles outside the camp, the sacrifices were burnt to ashes. This was to show the people that if sin is unforgiven, it leads to a terrible punishment. If we die without being forgiven, we will be outcasts and we will bear the punishment ourselves. Children, let this be a warning to you to turn to God and seek forgiveness for your sin. To close, think of a map. Why would you look at a map? To find the way to go. Remember, the tabernacle was the Lord's map, as it were. It shows the way to the forgiveness of sins. If we go to Christ for the forgiveness of our sins, we will be saved. Our prayer is that the Lord would help you to see your need of a saviour. Give me a sight, O Saviour, of thy wondrous love to me, of the love that brought thee down to earth to die on Calvary. O make me understand it, help me to take it in, what it meant to thee, the Holy One, to bear away my sin. Ask the Lord to forgive you today. And that was today's lesson at Tabernacle Cardiff Sunday School. Uh, it's now time for this week's memory verse, uh, which is coming up uh, onto the screen now. Uh, and it's uh, this one. Uh, we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. And that's Romans chapter 5 and verse 11. Well let's now <clears throat> have a look at uh, this week's uh, take-home sheets which are now uh, downloadable in one of the two usual ways uh, either by uh, clicking on the link uh, in the description box um, or by going to the church's website that's tabernaclecardiff.org and there's a link there for uh, Sunday School take-home sheets on the home page. Uh, so either of those two ways you'll be able to get uh, this week's um, take-home sheets. Well, let's have a look now at uh, this week's take-home sheets. It should be at lesson 67. Uh, so please do make sure that you have lesson 67 at the top of your take-home sheet uh, for this week's uh, lesson. Uh, we'll have a look now at the infant's take-home sheet. And there you can see what a lovely uh, detailed picture there is uh, of the tabernacle uh, and the camps around. Um, and uh, so really looking forward actually uh, to your colourings uh, next week and to see how well uh, you've coloured um, that in. I've also got then a Bible verse as well uh, from our reading earlier at the bottom. Uh, and if we have a look now at the um, uh, juniors and the teenagers, again there's that uh, very detailed uh, image of the tabernacle and the camps around. Um, you've also got the um, a Bible verse from Hebrews, uh, your readings and your questions uh, as well. So I look forward to receiving um, those take-home sheets uh, next week uh, from you all for uh, the gallery. So uh, I hope that all goes well uh, with you this week. Well, speaking of take-home sheets, uh, let's have a look at your take-home sheets now from last week.
Well, that was lovely uh, to see your take home sheets uh, from last week. Uh, some lovely coloring and really well done to you all uh, for getting those in to us. Uh, for those of you who have never submitted a take home sheet before, or if you haven't submitted one in a while, then uh, we'd really welcome uh, some of your take home sheets for the gallery. So uh, do consider uh, sending those in uh, this week um, for next week's gallery. Well, let's now sing our closing uh, hymn together. Uh, and it's uh, this one. Uh, it's become a little bit of a favourite uh, of the Sunday School children. Uh, and it's uh, Give me a sight, O Saviour, of thy wondrous love to me, of the love that brought thee down to earth to die on Calvary. And then the chorus uh, that the little ones um, uh, enjoy singing. O oh, make me understand it. Help me to take it in what it meant to thee, the Holy One, to bear away my sin. It's been lovely to have you with us here today at Tabernacle Cardiff Sunday School and I trust it's been a blessing to you too uh, to be with us here today. Uh, well let's now bring our time together to a close uh, by coming to our Heavenly Father uh, in prayer. So let's make sure uh, that we're sat nice and still. Let's have our hands together and our eyes closed. Our gracious God and our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Uh, we thank thee that it is your day and that you are the great creator uh, who has made us, uh, Lord, and who cares for us. Lord, we thank you for our lesson today, Lord. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would help us to take in what we have learnt. Lord, help us to see that Christ is the only way and that, Lord, we pray that you would show us our sin, show us our need of a saviour, and help us, Lord, to repent of our sins and to believe in Jesus. Lord, be with us now uh, for this coming week, Lord. Uh, keep us safe and from harm and bring us back, God willing, uh, to Sunday school next week. Uh, Lord, for us to learn more and more about thee. Uh, help us now, Lord, and forgive us our sins, we pray. For we ask all these things in our Saviour's name, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.